Shalom, shalom, Israel. Most High Christ bless. I'm Captain Yadon, and to my left, I'm also all right. So today's topic with the 15 minutes with the captain is going to be: Can all nations fit in the kingdom? All right. It's a hot topic in Christianity. A lot of people don't understand that the root reason of a lot of people not understanding the kingdom only being for Israel is low self-esteem and love for the other nations. All right. That's a topic in itself. So with no further ado, let's get into the scriptures and prove this. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter 1 verse 6. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6. So let me set the scene, Israel. Christ died, was rectified, was about to go meet the Father. And what was? let's see what happened. Come on. Verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again? The kingdom to Israel. You see that? The Lord said, they asked, the, the, they, the disciples asked, he said, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And it's showing you that what? The kingdom always belonged to Israel. And the disciples understood that. All right. Let's prove that some more. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27. All right. Daniel chapter 7 verse 27. Let's go. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. So now, let's examine this. What did we just read? Let's read it again and read it slow. This is a future prophecy that we read in Daniel, the seventh chapter. Come on. Verse 27, and the kingdom, meaning what? Rulership and dominion and over everything. That's what that means, dominion. Come on. And the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. So what does that mean, the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven? The whole planet Earth. That's All right. right. Come on. Shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high so when you read psalms 1 uh, 148 and 9, uh, 14 it tells you that the saints are israel all right come on whose kingdom is a everlasting kingdom so like, yeah you gotta ask yourself is america an everlasting kingdom no america will not last forever just like china russia just like greece rome egypt all these kingdoms fell we're talking about the nation of Israel set up under Christ will last forever. That's All right. right. Read it, that part again. Whose kingdom is a everlasting kingdom. So that means it's going to be uh, everlasting. It's going to be forever. Come on. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. You see that? Meaning what? All people on the earth are going to serve. That's what that means. If you're not of the 12 tribes of Israel, you're going to serve. Right. So now, read. Hitherto is the end of the matter. Hitherto is the end of the matter. What does that mean? That's what the whole Bible is written about. That's what the whole Bible is written about. Come on. As for me, Daniel, my congestions. Right, there we go. Much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me. You see that? Come on. But I kept the matter in my heart. Because you have to understand, what did Daniel see? He seen the overthrow of kingdoms, and he saw the bloodshed, and he saw the nation of Israel getting the kingdom. That's what he saw. He saw much destruction, all right? So with that being said, let's jump over to the 12th chapter, all right? Let's see what, uh, if this is going to be consistent in the book of Daniel. We're going to go to many other places. But the point that we're trying to show is, can all nations fit in the kingdom? Think about how many people that's on the planet Earth right now. Can all people go and move to Jerusalem? No. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there 
was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. You see that? So at this time, Michael will stand up for the children of thy people. That's a Pacific people. And it said, and all of them that are written in the book. Come on. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. You see that? So we want to be those brothers and sisters that endure and be able to wake up to everlasting life. All right. So now let's go over to um, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. All right. So what are we reading? We're reading a, the greatest story ever told. The 12 tribes of Israel being redeemed and being set back up in rulership. That's All right? right. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 6. Verse 9, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So you got to ask yourself, what is the will that's going to be done on the planet earth? When you read Psalms 40 and 8, the will is the laws. That's right. The will of the Father are the laws. Meaning what? The world will be set up with justice and order. Justice and order. So with that being said, let's go to Psalms uh, 147, 19 and 20. Thy will be done on earth. Who's going to execute the will? Let's read it. Go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. You see that? So you, so we just read in Matthew 6, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Psalms 40 and 8, the will is, the father, is keeping the commandments, the law is being executed. So with that being said, who's going to execute them? Who's going to be the judge to execute them? The children of Israel. Right. All right. Read that part again, 19 and 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. You see that? He had not dealt so with any nation. The Lord never dealt with the other nations like right. that. Never. Come on. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. You see that? So did, did the other nations go through Deuteronomy 28? When you read Daniel 9 and uh, 11, it tells you that no nation suffered the way that the children of Israel suffered. And we suffered that because what? The redemption of us is going to be great. All right? The Lord tells us tells us that in uh, Zep, uh, Zephaniah 3 and 9, 19, that we're going to get praise and fame in every land where it's carried captive. So the Lord's letting us know in these last days that we have an inheritance, but we must stay in the spirit, stay strong, and endure to receive it. That's right. All right? So now, let's go to um, uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. What are we reading? We're reading about the children of Israel being restored back to a holy people and being restored back in a rightful place as rulers on the planet earth. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. So that's telling you who is mercy for? The 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob. Come on. And will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. The land that the children of Israel are going to be set in is the land of Israel, all right? Jerusalem, all right? Come on. And the strangers shall be joined with them. So how are the strangers going to be joined with the children of Israel? Let's see. Come on. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, and the people shall take them. So you ever heard of kidnapping? That's what we're reading right now. The people shall take them. Come on. And bring them to their place. Jerusalem. 
and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. You see that? So a possession is what? Your property. So the Bible just said that the children of Israel shall have slaves in the kingdom. That's what we just read. All right. Come on. And they should take them captives who captives they were. You see that? Come on. And they shall rule over their oppressors. You see that? So that's showing you that what? The tables are going to be turned. So you got to ask yourself, when the tables are turned, how are the other nations going to operate? What are their jobs going to be doing? Why are they going to be slaves? What's going to happen? All right. Why are they going to be in the kingdom in the first place in Jerusalem area anyway? Right. It's to build the land, to build the temples. Let's prove that. All right. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 60 and 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy wall. You see that? Labor. A workforce. No 401k. No minimum wage. None, none of it. Sun up from sun up. 24 hours working. That's right. We might let them do sundown. We might <laughs> let them rest just a little bit. The point is, the scriptures is letting you know that what? A workforce of the other nations will be building the kingdom. Right. Right? And their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee. I smote thee, come on. But in my favor have I had, had mercy on thee. You see that? He said, in thy favor I have mercy upon thee. Right? Come on. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. You see that? So that's showing you the elite, the high echelon is going to be serving the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 11 and 20. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 20. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 20. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord sworn unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. You see that? This is heaven. Let's see what heaven looks like. Go ahead. For ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than the, yourselves. You see that? So the Lord's letting you know that other nations are going into captivity. Come on. Every place where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. You see that? So the Lord telling you, us that every place that our tre our, we tread our feet is going to be ours. Come on. From the wilderness and of Le Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon from the river Euphrates the river Euphrates, even unto the utmost sea, shall your coast be. You see that? So the Lord's letting us know every single uh, piece of land, sea, is going to be the 12 tribes of Israel. It's going to belong to them. It's saying the same thing we read in Daniel 7. All right? Let's go to uh, Isaiah 63. All right? Isaiah 63 and 1. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 1. Who is that that cometh from Edom with thy garments from ba Basra? Basra. This is this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. 
are that that speak in righteousness mighty to save. You see that? Mighty to save. So that's what we waiting on. We waiting on the Savior to come to save the children of Israel, to set them back in their own land. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.